And, and for me, this is a personal one. You know, JP, I'm an old soul at heart, but I, I feel like I was born adult, like always hanging out at the, the kids, parents, my friends, parents table, talking to them. But my generation really does get a bad rep. The millennials, the Gen Zs, uh, they're really looked down upon. I mean, but I look at history, especially after like the Jesus Revolution movie, and I'm thinking, this isn't new. I mean, my grandparents uh, were worried about the hippies. So why is this such an important message for grandparents and parents to listen to? Specifically about giving. Why is giving yeah. an important message? Uh, I mean, it's central to what it means to follow Jesus. I mean, God, as as God created, he's a creator and he created us and he made us in his image. He's a generous God, first of all. We see that. Everything we have, you know, James tells us the, that every good gift comes down from the Father of heavenly lights. And so we know he's a generous God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus did not tie this blood, but he gave all of himself on, on our behalf. And so we consistently see uh, the generosity of God. We've been made in his image. So in part to, to be like God is to, to be generous. But then I think he, he didn't make us to be containers um, I, I think that's that's the message of the world. Satan is the little G God of this world, the prince of the air. And the message of the air, the message under the sun, the message uh, on earth is that we're to be containers, that we're to have the, the biggest house, the fastest cars, uh, the nicest watches, uh, the best shoes, you know, near and dear to my heart. Like just that we're to collect things. And God calls us to be a conduit that he gives us things so that we make sure that we get it to the right place. Uh, he didn't call us to be a pail. He called us to be a pipe. And mm -hmm. so a pail stores up things. A pipe gets it to where wherever it goes. And so uh, it's it's rooted into our very existence. I think that that magnifies the importance of it. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I, I love what you talked about with tie. You know, Jesus did not tie this blood. I mean, he gave everything. But it's so easy, and I know you've spoken to this before, that we have to get past that prodigal brother stage. Um, and I think that's really important as generations. Uh, you look back and we say, well, it's not like it used to be. Like, we have to have patience for the other generations. And if you see things that you want to complain about in the coming generations, you, you shouldn't get in a complacent standpoint where I just want to complain about it, I want to get involved to try to teach this next generation why giving and philanthropy is so important. Because if it stops with the elder generation, it stops with the boomer generations, we have a real problem. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. No, I mean, I think if it stops with any generation, we have a problem because again, at, at, at the core, it's the church not being the church. And we, I mean, there's, there's no exception in the scripture. And in fact, uh, you know, I'll say this, you see this incredible momentum building in Acts, Acts chapter one, you know, the Holy Spirit comes, a message is preached, thousands are saved, Acts chapter two, thousands, Acts chapter three, thousand, Acts chapter four, thousands, it's just like the Lord adding to their numbers. There's a prison break in there. There's just like these supernatural events. And the church is just building momentum and you get to Acts chapter five. And then the end of Acts chapter four, there's Barnabas, the, the son of encouragement, uh, sells, a, sells a field and brings the money to the apostles feed and everyone applauds. It's like amazing because generosity is core to the church. And you get to Acts yeah. chapter five and there's this couple by the name of Ananias and Sapphira and they see the encouragement that Barnabas got and they thought, man, I, we want that. I'm, I'm presuming their motive a little bit, but it seems like the way the story's told that they're like, we want the encouragement that Barnabas got. They sell a field and they all they did wrong, okay, uh, at, at least in action. Now, I can't measure their heart, but in action, they just gave a portion of the money to uh, Peter and said that it was all of the money. So they lied. It says, they did not only lie to me, but you lied to the Holy Spirit and I think that 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 desire for the perception of generosity without the heart of generosity killed them mm -hmm. and they die and Ananias dies. And then Peter says to Sapphira, hey, is this all the money you got for the field? And she says, yes, it is. And he says the same people that carried out your dead husband are now going to carry out your body. And you think, why such a harsh punishment? In the scripture, it's like God is trying to grab our attention and say, hey, man, the church moves on generosity. 
Like this is this is core to the gospel advancing and the kingdom being built. And and I'm not playing games when someone's trying to manage the perception and they try to, to give the perception of generosity without having the heart of generosity. It, it is not good. And they I, I think he's trying to teach us a lesson right there in the fifth chapter of Acts. 